The teeth of fish sports can tell you an awful lot about how they live. And the teeth on a king mackerel, wahoo, or even barracuda point to a slashing predator that usually gets just one shot at its prey. Contrast this with the tiny teeth of some other top predators, like the jacks and tunas, that tend to engulf their prey whole, wasting little if any time tearing them apart. And people often wonder why species like king mackerel are so plentiful around structure, especially the oil rigs off much of the Gulf Coast. The old adage of the fish go where the forage is certainly applies here. An oil rig is a haven to a myriad of small species, like some of the smaller jacks, corgis, and herrings. They tend to hang very close to the structure, which affords a certain degree of protection. But sometimes they wander a bit, and that's when the prowling kings make their move. Occasionally a large predator, like a cobia or amberjack, will flush the prey species out from the rig, and that creates a heyday for the big kings. In the northern gulf, we used to think kings left when the water chilled in late November. But now it seems the colder water chased the smaller food species away, hence the departure of the kingfish. Some bait species may hang around the rigs all year, and many of those big old kings hang around as well. And they're not the only ones. January and February have become popular fishing months off the northern Gulf Coast, with anglers targeting amberjacks and tunas as well as the kings.